All right. Well, welcome back to the I Wealth Podcast. And uh, today we're talking about uh, saving for college. Between me and my brother, we got a uh, <laughs> my two brothers. We got a handful of children. And, a mitful. Uh, yeah. uh, a mitful of children. <laughs> and the question becomes college. It's overwhelming thinking about that amount of money going for education. Yeah. What can we be doing now to help help us in the future? Yeah. First of all, you got to get on the same page with your spouse. Okay. Do you even want to pay for some college or not? you got to get that figured out. And I've had clients say, I want to pay for all my kids' college. They'll even sacrifice their retirement and work longer so they can put their kids through college. Sure. But other people say, I had to do it all on my own. They can do it on their own. Like, I'm not saving. <laughs> so, so get on the same page with your spouse. But let's say that you agree that you want to help somehow financially your kids. Yeah. There's a lot of different vehicles out there. There's... The, the number one thing is a 529 plan. We have a lot of clients. I've used them personally for my own kids. Yep. It's a college savings vehicle. It's IRS code 529. That's what the numbers stand for. And it's a tied to a different state. And the, the advantage of that is, is the money you put in comes out of your checkbook. So you've already paid taxes on it. But the interest is tax-free if it's used for college. So that's great. But what happens if your kids don't go to college? Yep. Or what happens if they get a scholarship? Like what happens you know, during those times? And so if they get a scholarship or go into the military, they can pull it out tax-free. So they're not harmed by that. But if they don't go to school, they're going to pay whoever pulls it out and uses it, whether it's you, you bring it back to you and your spouse, or whether you give it to your child, somebody's going to pay taxes on the earnings. Mm -hmm. It's not tax-free anymore. It's not used for school. And then secondly someone's going to pay a 10% penalty on the earnings of that vehicle. Mm. So you want to have a good idea that you think they're going to go there. But the IRS just changed the rules at the end of last year that allow $35,000 of 529 plan money be converted into a Roth IRA for the child. And they can do it at, at $6,000 a year increments over okay. time. So what's really neat is before we'd have money left over in a 529 plan and you'd use it for a grandkid or you'd give it to a niece or a nephew or take it yourself and pay taxes and penalties on the earnings. Now you've got a little bit of a leeway with this converted to a Roth that, that you can do as well. But there's life insurance. <coughs> Bless me. you. There's life insurance. There's gifts that you can make. There's other areas that you can use for college savings. So it's it's not as easy as just, hey, open a savings account at the bank and throw money into it. And throw money into it. Yeah. So it's interesting, like if you're drawing out $6,000 after, so like let's say that you paid for your kid's college and then there was you know $12,000, you'd kind of spread that out over two years yeah. after the kid graduated from school. Yeah. And then that could be for their retirement someday down the road. Yeah, and it can be rolled over. So no one pays taxes or penalties on all that $6,000 each year for two years, in your yeah. example. So there's no temp penalty or, or taxes due. And then it's tax-free forever for the child when they retire someday. Wow. So it's a really neat benefit that just was passed at the end of 2022. So if you've got kids... <laughs> this seems like kind of a shoe in because yeah. I mean, if you look at that money at the child's retirement, yeah. what might look like a very small decision for you know a business owner or a good saver mm -hmm. ends up totally changing your grandkids' lives or at least your kids' lives at right. retirement. Right? Yeah. I mean, you just do the compounding interest on that. It's pretty cool. I know. You know, the other thing is I have a lot of business owners that I work with and we'll set it up. So if the kids can truly work in the business, yep. I don't care if they're sweeping the shop floor or mowing grass, yep. if they can. Loading trucks. Yep. Exactly. Try to get them some income yep. and then they can fund a Roth IRA. Yeah. That Roth IRA for them can be tax-free for retirement, but they can also use it for college too. Yeah. So it just depends on your situation. It depends on you know how much you want to pay for your kids' edu kids' education, and then what's the right vehicle. And there's several of them out there. So you really need to sit down with somebody, Google it, but you're going to sift through a thousand pieces of information. Or get in front of a financial advisor that can at least just help educate you so you can make a good decision on it. Very good. I like that. I like that. Uh, anything else that we should know about, uh, you know, saving for your kids? No. Well, yeah. It's, start. It's compounding. <laughs> Maybe start. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right right now, if we're in 2023, if we ran somebody going to the University of Minnesota, I mean, you're going to need 250,000. You're going to need a quarter of a million dollars or more. You might even need 300,000 18 years from now to pay for a four-year education. 
It's that expensive. That's so, just crazy. If the kids too, you're already behind the eight ball. Like you need to get some money saved. And it's kind of bleak, but even just the other night when we were out with some friends, we were talking about how, you know, college education these days is kind of like what a high school education was, you know, along, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Now that college education is kind of like almost everybody has these college educations. Not everybody, but right. a good chunk of the people. And it's almost like to go to that next level um, for education, even that master's degree. And then it's a bump up as far as what it costs again you right, know right. and it's like the master's degree is the new college degree and the college degree is kind of like the interesting the, the that's high school interesting degree. take i haven't thought about it that way i do have a lot of clients grandparents and parents now that are really pushing for trade schools yep and things like that some of them are politically motivated yep. because they're not happy with what's going on in some universities and what's being taught things some of them are just, it's the baby boomers that are aging out and there's such a demand. You can go and get a two-year degree and come out making sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 a year, have very little debt yep. and move on forward. And if that's the case and you have a 529 plan, you take thirty five grand over time and put it in a Roth. I mean, there's some There's, there's some definitely there. something to be said for the trade schools and like yeah. actually having a real skill That's right. when you come out of school. I, I like that. Yeah. So save and uh, get your kids some, some real education. I think that's what it really boils down to. For sure. I like it. All right. We'll see you back here next time on the iWealth Podcast. Thanks, Matt.